30s this morning. Get to about 52, 53 by the middle of the afternoon. A little bit of wind. Not too much humidity. Okay, let's look to the keys to the game today, Stench. Brought to you by Barbecue Guys. Well, these are going to be Alabama-centric. And part of it's just a function of what they've seen here in the second half of the season and last week. Obviously run the football and clean up pass protection. Something that Coach Saban talked about. But the other thing that he mentioned, this was going into the LSU game, is dial in the deep ball. They've hit big shots, there's no doubt. But to amplify that percentage, to have even greater success stretching the football downfield, the first two are kind of the guard variety things that you need to do. The third thing, though, that's that explosiveness that they want offensively. Crazy what this guy's done, 15 seasons in Tuscaloosa, now at 70 years young. He'd go ahead of Mac Brown with the most wins of any active college football coach with a victory today. That would be his 265th. New Mexico State will receive the kick. Jawan Price and Terrell Warner are back deep for Alabama. With Will Reichert putting his right foot into it. And it's a short kick, and it's fielded at the 11, and down goes Price. He was surprised by how short that kick went, and so New Mexico State will have to start inside their 15-yard line with Jonah Johnson, the quarterback, the junior from California, coming out to lead the Aggies, who have had a brutal year. 1-8 on the season, not in a conference. They will join Conference USA two years from now but really have been a nomad throughout college football the last couple of years playing these types of games. They'll play Kentucky next week. Yeah, you'd be hard-pressed to find a program that was more negatively impacted by COVID than New Mexico State. Weren't able to play football last season. A lot of transfers out. Take a look at where 31 is on the field on just about every play. He's shaded over to the left side after a pickup of three as they throw it out of the backfield to Price. Jalen Armour Davis on the tackle. It's just the second meeting for New Mexico State and for Alabama. Tide beat them 62 to 10 two years ago here at Bryant-Denny Stadium. Alabama's unbelievable at home. They've won 59 of their last 61 here. They have the best all-time winning percentage at 83%. Johnson will throw wide open receiver and that's Andre Bodison who got lost in the secondary. It's a pickup of 16. Well, already, so you can see what New Mexico State is likely to do most of this game. Move the pocket, get the ball out quickly. So we'll play action fake and a half roll to his left. Sits right in front of the safety coming up and just beyond Malachi Moore. Lost in the coverage. That's a concern of Alabama that's in, had its moments in the secondary with big plays. Pick up of 16, Justice Powers on the sweep doesn't get much. His three Bama defenders are in pursuit. Christian Harris on the tackle. We were talking about the Aggies led by Doug Martin in his ninth season as the head coach. He took New Mexico State in 2017 to the Arizona Bowl. That was their first bowl bid in 57 years, but Stench, to your point, since then, just seven and 28. It's so difficult to establish consistency, especially when your team outside of the conference environment. There's a pickup of one on the last play. The Aggies ahead to the 38. Johnson throws out of the backfield again, but it's dropped by Herity. And it'll be third and nine. Third and nine for the Aggies coming up. A lot of swing passes. Get the ball out quickly as a quarterback. It's going to be difficult to establish any type of run game. You look at Alabama defensively. Dominant, really, versus the run. Haven't conceded more than 100 rushing yards since that Florida game until last week versus LSU, and they were just able to nudge north of the century mark. Third and long, a dangerous down, of course, versus this Crimson Tide defense. There's Anderson, watch out, he's down. He has more success than just about anybody in the game getting to the quarterback, and he was just about unblocked there. His 11th and a half sack on the season. We're watching him in pregame warm-ups, and it's the get-off. He wins off his first step. That first step alone, and it's already over. There is no move, there is no chop or a swim or a spin, not necessary. His get-off is remarkable, and he's able to do it 
out of that two-point stance. He'll put his hand in the dirt as well, but that guy is a game-changing type talent. He has 18 and a half sacks in 22 college football games. It's crazy. JoJo Earl can't receive the, the he is not able to field the punt and they throw flags. Every official on the field made sure that they had a flag and they threw it. Yeah, it was like a participation trophy <laughs> at the end of that one. Did you throw a flag or not on that? You got to give JoJo a shot at it, and the Aggies didn't do it. As you see, Dylan Early. Mark Curlis is today's referee. There is no foul for kick catch interference. The defender was blocked into the receiver. First down. All right, so despite everybody throwing their flags, they picked them up. And Bryce Young, after the 43-yard punt, comes onto the field, the sophomore from Pasadena, California, fourth nationally in passing with 28 touchdowns. That's number one in the SEC. First nine starts, Stinch, one more touchdown than Tua, who did have the record for most touchdowns in his first nine starts. This guy has been outstanding. Yeah, the coaching staff is, is universal in its praise of Bryson Young, Young and the way he has played this year. The poise that he has demonstrated and under duress, as we mentioned last week. Yep. It wasn't just the sacks. He took some hits, a lot of hurries as well. They got to keep it clean and give him a better environment. Take to Brian Robinson and they swing it out to Slade Bolden and Slade is up near the 38-yard line. Tackled by DJ McCullough. It's a pickup of 13 for the junior from Louisiana. Let's see how much faster Bill O'Brien's offense goes today, Stench. That was something he referenced yesterday in our meeting with him. Yeah, definitely going to be more intentional in their tempo today. And it's a handoff to Robinson, and Robinson bangs ahead to the 42-yard line. Could not get anything going last week against LSU. Just 13 carries for 18 yards. He didn't have a run over four yards last week. Yeah, it had to have been frustrating for the offensive side of the football the way they ran it last week. Another quick throw, and it's Mechie. And John doesn't get much. Well, DJ Jam McCullough right there with him. And Jamison Williams has been a, a, a lightning rod for this offense, but one of the things where he has been somewhat deficient is blocking. He has not been as effective. It affected the run game, and it affected that play there. Was unable to keep Mechie clean as he made that reception. Tied number two in America on third down conversions at 55%. It's a third and four. They need to get it past the 47-yard line. Young has all day. Swings it out to Robinson. And Alabama is going to punt Chris Ojo. Was able to wrap up Robinson there, fourth down. You can see the Aggies a little bit from LSU there, showing those mugged up linebackers in the line of scrimmage. This is a really nice tackle in space versus Brian Robinson. You got a man to beat and another tackler coming on down. That's a big stop for New Mexico State here to open this game. James Burnham, the Australian freshman it was a 39-yard average on the season. We'll punt it to Lawrence Dixon. Dixon gets away from it as it bounces at the 16, and it dies at the 19-yard line. A 37-yard punt, no score in T-Town early on a Saturday. Stay. Save money like a champion with Allstate and in part by Mercedes EQ. These guys won national championships. Coach Bryant, Coach Stallings back in 1992. And Nick Saban has set a new standard in all of college football that we wonder if anyone will ever reach with those national championships, six of which he's won with the Crimson Tide now, one at LSU. No score, almost five minutes into the game. Johnson on the run, and that is an up-for-grabs ball that's incomplete. Jared Wyatt unable to make the catch as Josh Job was fighting for the football with him, second down. Got up a little pressure that time. Able to get Jonah Johnson off of his spot. Nearly got a completion downfield. A good job by Job. 
defending that pass and getting a breakup, getting between the receiver's hands and Jared Wyatt. It's a run for the Aggies, and it's Jawan Price not able to get much up to the 22-yard line. Stinch, what do you think of the Alabama defense as the season has gone on? They've had to replace so many players that got drafted off of their secondary that won the title last year. Yeah, and the secondary was the area of concern. And even Pete Golding talked about that a little bit. Knew that they were going to have some work to do. That's certainly been the area where they've conceded the big plays. Guys confused in coverage at times. The front seven, you know, Will Anderson, obviously a household name. But I feel as if they've been underestimated, undervalued maybe over the course of the year. Anderson's at the bottom of your screen. He's blocked up on the third and eight, wide open, past the 40, up to the 44 is Cole Harity. And again, an open space in the secondary for an Aggie receiver to make a first down catch. This is 20 yards. And once again, just getting lost in the coverage. Jalen Armour Davis was underneath it. Jordan Battle was the safety over the top to that side of the field and an explosive play for the Aggie offense. We just got done talking about the secondary where that's been the issues, not physical errors, but mental. To Omari Samuels, Johnson rolls out and throws out of the backfield to Thomas Whitford, the big tight end from Rhode Island, picks up five more. And Coach Golding was saying that overall, he really likes the execution and the consistent performance from the defense, but there's one or two yeah. catastrophic mistakes during the game that have cost them. See Texas A&M, see Florida. Second and five, try the other side, and it's Harity again. Another first down for the Aggies into Alabama territory. That time a good job by Jonah Johnson. So they brought the slot pressure. A little bit of perimeter pressure from the edge. Jordan Battle spinning down into the coverage, but not before they were able to make that completion and convert the sticks. Alabama 43, Johnson, quick throw, and this one's dropped by Samuels, who had free space to run. It will be second down. Another thing that Coach Golding was talking about was leadership. He said he's seen more of it as the season has gone on. Certainly Will Anderson with the way he plays as a leader. Christian Harris is turning into one. Henry Tooto is not the most vocal of guys at Mike Linebacker, but that's something that needs to develop if Alabama is going to have a chance to get back to the college football playoff at the end of the 2021 season. Second and 10 for the Aggies as the Tide fans had another sip of coffee and they're awake suddenly. And right at the line of scrimmage, it's Byron Young lassoing Price, but a flag comes in. At first, you know, the way he kind of spun around, it looked almost like, you know, typically you'd see that with a face mask. I think he got his horse collar. Personal though. foul, face mask, yeah. number 47 defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Watch him just kind of reach out and grab him. And I don't, I don't know. I didn't see his head spin around at all. I don't think he got his face mask. He did. No. He got the front of his jersey. And just kind of spun him around. That's, yeah, that's that's a miss because it, you know it looked like he got the face mask. I didn't see his hand make contact with the face mask at all. It's the second straight week Alabama's gotten a flag for something they didn't do. Jordan Battle got a horse collar penalty against LSU last week. Now suddenly the Aggies inside the 30, and this is swung out to P.J. Johnson, and that was destined to fail as Malachi Moore came up to make the tackle. It's a loss, second down. Nice trigger that time by Malachi Moore. Quick diagnosis, playing off, a lot of grass to cover. He triggers quickly and is there as the ball arrives. You hear that stick. A personal foul, though, so you get the pass downfield and you pick up a first down and a half on a phantom face mask. Loss of three, second and 13. Johnson's in trouble, gets out of there, takes off, and he's down near the 26-yard line where Toe Toe was waiting for him. It'll be third down. 
third and less than ideal. We've already seen it. So a third and long earlier. Mexico State incapable of holding up in protection. And Will Anderson being the culprit. The 31 at the bottom of the line of scrimmage, working against the right side of that New Mexico State offensive front. Johnson under trouble, and there he goes down as Toe Toe on the blitz. So I'm drawing your attention to the bottom of the screen, the bottom of the line of scrimmage to Will Anderson Jr. But you can't forget about the top of the screen. And Henry Toe Toe comes clean off the edge. You had a protecting back to that side, a bust in the protection because they had the numbers to pick up that side of the pressure. They didn't. Does like a catastrophic play. Could have been a sack strip fumble. Well, this is a 50-yard attempt for Ethan Alberson. It would be a career long, and it's right down the heart. The sophomore from San Diego puts the Aggies on the board first with 5.35 to go in the first quarter. So New Mexico State coming in here, they had a game plan. They didn't seem too intimidated offensively. The defense got a stop. The offense is able to capitalize. They got a big play, got a little help with a personal foul. And the Aggies up early versus number two, Alabama. Wow, how about that Samford with the early lead on the Gators. Todd Grantham, the defensive coordinator, fired after the South Carolina game this past weekend. Gators off to a rough first nine games of the season as Alabama calls for the fair catch just shy of the 30-yard line. Cameron Latu with the fair catch there. And the Crimson Tide will get started on offense. Some shuffling on the offensive line, Stinch. That's Damian George who gets the start at right tackle today. As you see Chris Owens just two spots to his right. Owens was the right tackle. He's now the center after Darian Dalcourt hurt his ankle in that LSU game last week. And a new face there in their left guard as well with Javian Cohen. An injury to his wrist, forcing Tommy Brown into the starting spot. So three new shuffling spots, Young. Looks back and has Robinson. And he's down just shy of midfield. 21 yards. So give credit where credit's due. I was on Jamison Williams early for his blocking. That time did a pretty nice job of screening off the defender downfield so Brian Robinson could pick up an additional six or seven yards. Alabama wants to go fast. as they have it now at midfield. Young fakes to Robinson, over the top, it's wide open to Williams. Jamison again, touchdown Alabama. He had a 58 yarder last week against LSU. A 94-yarder against Miami to start hey, the season, hey, 81 go, against Southern Miss. That's for 50. It's a deep ball threat. What would you say? At seven coming into this game, six of them for score, something like that. So we'll just glom on another one, number eight. That's something that Coach Saban wanted to see more of out of his offense. RPO looked that time. Makes it easier on the front, easier on the quarterback. Will Reichard makes it seven to three in Alabama. Back on track on offense. The junior from St. Louis, Missouri, by way of Ohio State, feels at home in T-Town. What a season for Jamison Williams and the Crimson Tide up early in Tuscaloosa. Taking the lead over New Mexico State with 4.51 to go in the first quarter. On the eighth offensive play of the game for Alabama, Jamison Williams with a 50-yard touchdown catch from Bryce Young for Nick Saban in his quick strike offense. Wants to see them go faster today and use more RPOs in play action. Check those boxes 
so far. Tell us about this RPO that led to a touchdown stench. Well, you know, it gives a great influence on the defense. So watch the safety check up. And Jamison Williams, who's exchanged right at the line of scrimmage by the corner, he's expecting to have some type of help in the back end. A lot of eyes in that offensive backfield. So defensive coach, they talk about eye violations. Spaziani's over there going, guys, you can't get caught up in that offensive backfield on the fake. That could have easily been a handoff. Instead, Bryce Young pulls it. It's another big play to his, one of his favorite targets in Jamison Williams. New Mexico State went down the field on the Crimson Tide and ended up kicking a 50-yard field goal the last time. Johnson's under duress as Will Anderson was in the backfield with him, but he gets it off to Tomas Whitford. And he makes the catch up at the 36-yard line. It's an 11-yard completion. How about the start for Jonah Johnson in this game? Hit some shots downfield that time. Somewhat under duress, able to deliver a strike. 7 of 10 for 67 yards for the quarterback so far. And that ball goes to Price. And Price runs head on into Tim Smith for a loss, second down. Uh, Tim Smith did a great job on that snap. Getting upfield right now, disrupting that run play. Smith, the sophomore from Guilford, Florida. Playing some, playing, getting a bunch of reps in the interior of Alabama's defensive line with DJ Dale. Johnson throws and it's a short pass back near the original line of scrimmage where Warner makes the catch. It'll be third and long after Job makes the tackle. The third down now. What's so interesting about Will Anderson? He's a great edge rusher, but on that snap, he's in a four-point stance. A four eye. That means he's lined up basically head up an offensive tackle. He's not trying to play on the edge. He's a guy that's just going to try to shock you and play the run. You got to be physical to do that. Now he gets to do something he does really well, which is rush the passer. Here he comes around the edge, and it's thrown out complete for nothing. His price makes the catch, but Moore is right there in coverage. Fourth down for New Mexico State. And what's interesting about what you're saying about Will Anderson is Pete Golding said if we ask him to do that or we ask him to drop back and play a, the linebacker position or more of a rover on the field he's excited to do whatever we ask him to most of the time you say I'm not sure I can do that this guy says yes to everything you ask him to do he's capable of doing it too you know so there's guys maybe that might have the willingness but not the ability to execute on it but you're asking a guy who's about 250 pounds to line up, head up an offensive tackle, play right down the middle of it. Carlson with another punt, this is a beauty. Jojo Earl fields it at the 14 yard line, he's wrapped up right there. It is a 49 yard punt. Wow. And Earl losing a couple of yards on the return and he's not off the ground yet. We'll check on him in just a second. Tonight, SEC football final, as you covered with the biggest stories of the day. And Breakdowns of all the games. Dari Noko host along with Gene Chiswick, Chris Doring, and Benjamin Watson. It's at 10.30 Eastern after Arkansas and LSU right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. Let's check on JoJo Earl, the freshman from Texas. see what exactly happened to Earl, but he is still down on the field. Working on his lower left leg, it looks like. I don't know if when he spun or when he kind of got spun down there. It caused him to tweak something. He's kicking that right leg in pain, though, for sure. And they're working on the left side. Dylan Zolezzi is the one that hit him for New Mexico State. JoJo's one of those true freshmen that Alabama wants to depend on in the future. He's not putting any pressure on that right leg. Maybe just when he planted Stench, he must have injured something. You know, in, in some ways, it's a little reminiscent of the injury to Haynes King, the quarterback for Texas A&M earlier this year. 
He kind of got spun around on that left leg while it's it was the left planted. One. Yeah, you're right. You know, it, it looked like it torqued a little bit, like his cleats caught the turf as he was getting spun. <laughs> Definitely no weight being put on that leg at all. Alabama at the 14, an option toss to Robinson. Brian gets around the edge, and that's more like what we've seen from the fifth-year senior all season. It's a pickup of 17 yards for the fifth-year senior from right here in Tuscaloosa. Now take nothing away from the offensive front, but that's perimeter blocking that makes that play go. And once again, Jamison Williams, pretty good job blocking on the edge. Treshawn Holden, he coughed up the ball. Here come the Aggies down at the 20-yard line. Is picking it up off the ground is DJ McCullough. That ball looked like it popped out. And in fact, Holden wasn't even really arguing it. Ruling on the field of the runner not down and fumble is under further review. You know, he had that he had his left hand down. Which you can be, you can have that left hand down and still be an active ball carrier. It did not look like his left knee made contact like he was on top of the defender. And it looks like this is the look. Well, there's the there's elbow. His left but elbow it's, down. But was the ball, ball was moving? The ball already coming out. Yeah. yeah. Tough to overturn that, but that's a for the sophomore from Florida ruled a fumble on the field and would give New Mexico State the ball at the Alabama 20. Good job by Chris Ojo coming up there. Is that elbow down? before the ball starts to come out. That ball, his elbow clearly down right there. Now is the ball coming out? Good job by Ojo. It looks like his right knee bounced that ball out. After further review, the runner's elbow was down with the ball firmly in his possession. Second down and 13 at the 31 yard line. I, I think they got it right here. I mean, this was, you know, Mechie's out there blocking. Ojo does a great job of fighting through that block, but it looked to me like Holden's right knee bounced that ball out of his possession, but only after his left elbow was down. You piece those two looks together. That's the way I saw it, too, and it was cl very close. And the ball starts moving right after that elbow hits the ground, but Treshawn Holden can... Treshawn Holden can breathe a sigh of relief. It was a loss of two, though, as Alabama will have it at their own 31. Young in an empty backfield. Throws wide open past the 45 is Mechie. Nice pick up in protection, clean pocket. Young's able to hit one of his favorite targets in Mechie. 63 catches on the year for Mechie. Jamison Williams is one of those other favorites. And he's inside the 30, down to the 26, as you see JoJo Earl heading to the locker room after being injured on the punt. Right now, Alabama just moving the line of scrimmage. Able to get quick throws to the perimeter and ask their receivers to block. That time to Corey Brooks. Young has all day, he'll take off and give himself up inside the 10, down near the 13. Unlike maybe some other Alabama quarterbacks of the, of the past, especially Jalen Hurts, Bryce doesn't like to do that very often. He likes to stay in there and go through his progressions. It's more of a last option for him. Yeah, he's more of a scramble to throw versus a scramble to pick up yards as a rusher. At that time, the you know, protection was fine. He could have just pressed up and stayed, but you've got this huge rush lane wise to take advantage of it there. Down to the New Mexico State 14, swings it out, gets it to Mechie, and after bobbling it, he'll only pick up a couple of yards.
to the 12-yard line, but still the tempo that Bill O'Brien's offense is running with here in the last couple of drives is, I know, something that was a huge point of emphasis for him today. Yeah, and you look at it, it's a numbers game. You look out there, there's two over two. Two defenders over your two receivers, one's playing off. The non-receiver, the intended receiver anyway, you block for the other. Bryce Young, nine for nine to start the game here in the first quarter. 10 for 10, touchdown Cameron Latou. Latu with his sixth touchdown catch of the season. Only 15 catches on the year, six of them for touchdowns. And Reichert makes it 14 to three. It could have been a big fumble and given New Mexico State the ball at the Alabama 20 yard line. Instead, it's a seven play drive for 86 yards in just over two minutes that culminates with that young DeLatu touchdown. From Alabama, they'll air it out in the red zone. More than they typically have in the past, more than half, as you see. The holder over there going, man, thank goodness there's enough time. And Latu, that's a big target, 6'5", 250 pounds. A guy that yeah, has had a few issues with some drops, but they love his skill set and what he brings to this offense. The red zone completion for Bryce Young. It's something that they do more than half of the time. They get in that scoring position inside the 20. 53% of it is going to be in the air. And that time converts for a touchdown throw. New Mexico State at the 25-yard line. Let's get another studio update from our friend Dario Noco. All right, how about a couple of updates, starting with Florida and Samford again, 7-7 game. Look at Samford. Liam Welch to the uncovered Michael Weiss. Yeah, it's an attempted tackle. 14 all. Florida did just go down and tie the game. Big news here, guys. Nolan McCord, successful field goal for Mississippi State. They're down 7-3. No word on if Mike Leach will still hold tryouts. I was, I was wondering if you were going to announce someone that was just a simple student in Stark Vegas that was attempting field goals over on the other side of this state today. Up to the 25 yard line is as Young makes the, the tackle. I, Mike was dead serious too after that game against Arkansas after the, all those missed field goals. They're looking for kickers over at Mississippi State. The Aggies have one. They made a 50-yard field goal in the first quarter from Ethan Albertson to start the scoring, but the Tide have two touchdowns and lead New Mexico State 14-3 at the end of the first quarter. Crimson Tide looking to improve to 9-1 and one on the season and hold on to that number two ranking in the college football playoff. Temperatures in the low 50s for the Tide and the Aggies. Aggies down 14-3. Jonah Johnson throws a moon ball, and it's incomplete. Into double coverage, he was looking for Justice Powers, and Jordan battle battled with him. Third down. Johnson took a shot from Will Anderson, but not before he was able to get this punt off because that ball bounced off the solar system, came back down. Jordan Battle, more than enough time to get back underneath it. However, Justice Powers had his hands on it, had a chance to come down with it. Well, that throw in hang time. Jonah's in trouble and he goes down at the 26 yard line after a pickup of one as Christian Harris ran right with him to force this fourth down. Harris. Really stepped up in recent weeks, made an outstanding open field tackle near the goal line against LSU last week to preserve that victory. That, that was too close for comfort last week for the Tide. Yeah, they weren't pleased with it, that's for sure. I guess it depends on your perspective, right? LSU said they're going, hey, how about us in a lame duck season? So being 
A one possession win for the tie and the hard fought one. Slade Bolton is back, but it's blocked. Alabama gets it and off the carom. Here comes the tide inside the 20. Jalen Moody is tackled at the five. This was a meet me at the punter block right here. I mean, it could have been any number of Crimson Tide special teamers that time. Well played in the air to take it back in. I don't know if which one of the Alabama members of the punt block team got that ball. Setting up shop inside the five, Brian Robinson down to the four. McJackalone on the tackle. It looked like to me, Stinch, Christian Leary was the first one that put his hand on it, and he's getting congratulations on the on the bench right now. And now Robinson straight ahead, just short. Third and goal. Flag down. Old Chippy out there on the edge. There could be a substitution penalty here. Yeah, that's exactly what it is an illegal substitution penalty on New Mexico State. Substitution infraction, 12 players on the field on the defense. The penalties decline, result of the play is third down. Instead of taking second and goal from the just outside the two, Coach Saban elects to decline the penalty and see if the offensive line can move some earth in front of Brian Robinson. Robinson's extra effort. Touchdown, Alabama. The true freshman, Robbie Oots, came in there and lined up at fullback to help move some people in front of Robinson, but that 225-pound frame from Brian is the reason for the touchdown. And after a 3-0 New Mexico State lead, it's been all Crimson Tide since. Will Reichert makes it 21 to 3 with 13-15 to go in the second quarter. The blocked punt by Christian Leary. It was picked up by Jalen Moody. Gave Alabama the ball at the five. Brian Robinson did the rest. Touchdown, Alabama. C Network Football, presented by Allstate, is brought to you by new Coca-Cola Zero Sugar and Wendy's Hot and Crispy Fries. Try the best combo ever today. Beautiful day in Tuscaloosa's Crimson Tides off to a 21-3 lead. In the early parts of the second quarter, good crowd on hand. They have one more home game next week against Arkansas before they will play Auburn two weeks from now. New Mexico State will get it at the 25. All yours, Dari. What's happening in the other games? Well, guys, if we've heard it once, we've heard it a thousand times. Samford's offense is electric. It has been so far at the swamp, guys. 209 first quarter yards against Florida. Liam Welch to Jay Stanton, 40 yards. Samford, 21 first quarter points, and they lead the Gators by a touchdown. What's going on, guys? We saw it last week against South Carolina, Dar, at the Florida defense has it been an absolute disaster and it continues again today after firing Todd Grantham. Jonah Johnson on an end around to Powers and Powers doesn't get anything, maybe, maybe one yard. Second and nine as Helms makes the tackle. Helms is slow to get up too. 
junior from Washington, D.C. Coach Saban would tell you, obviously, you want to win the game. You want to play to a high standard, but maybe just as important stench is coming. No doubt. This is a concerning injury if, in fact, it's something that will persist. Kind of hard to tell, even in looking at it again. Marco Hellams coming off. Well, guys, one of the things that Pete Golding was telling us yesterday during meetings that I thought was interesting, obvious, but interesting, is that they have to literally cover every crevice, every possibility, every single week. It doesn't matter that New Mexico State's not an SEC opponent. He said, when you're Alabama, you can't necessarily trust the tape that these teams have put up all season long because when you're the Crimson Tide, they're going to throw the kitchen sink at you. So it's so much more preparation than maybe other teams when they've got an opponent like this coming in because they know what they're going to see offensively as so creative. Some good adjustments they've made so far. I know you're paying attention, Alyssa, to these injuries, too. You told us that JoJo Early is out for the game. JoJo Earl, rather, is out for the game. After he was carted off, now Helms hobbles off. Daniel Wright comes in for Helms. In the second and nine, and Johnson throws underneath. Dropped by Harity with Toto running with him. Third down. And a third and long. You know, early on, they had pretty good successes. The first down plays, early down plays. See if you can't get the third and manageable. Every team in the country would have concern for getting into a third and obvious situation versus this defense and the way that it can bend the edge at the bottom of the line of scrimmage with number 31. He can't get out of there. LeBrian Ray finishes him off. Dallas Turner had a shot at him. Fourth down. Yes. You know, that's twice now where we've seen it. But that time they gained Will Anderson, meaning he kind of pirated inside, stunted inside of the block of left tackle. And instead, the pressure comes from the opposite side. You think in your protection scheme, you find number 31. It's not always enough. And eyes wide open. The punt's been an adventure. Okay. We get this one off. Slade Bolden at the 42. After Earl went down, Bolden, the backup punt returner, is inside the 35-yard line. Pushed out at the 34. All crimson tied here in T-Town. Yeah. Delicious. Got a little bacon, some eggs, some cheese on here. Phenomenal. I feel like a for every For every meal of the day, Rama Jamas is outstanding. Alyssa, how is it down there? I got a nice bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich. It's delicious. Rama Jamas is, is Rama jamming on game day, too. Like, line out the door. Amazing. My first time here. I think they said that Phil Mathis' mom was in there. She was ordering up some food. She knows where it's at on game day. I feel bad for everybody else on the crew. There's just not enough to go around. <laughs> Young swings it out to Mechie. And he's inside the 40 down to the 35-yard line. So hard to pick a spot. Growing up in this state, coming up here, going to college football games throughout my life. There's, of course, Waysider, which is where Coach Bryant used to go eat breakfast, Ram and Jam is right outside the stadium, which does have tre tremendous milkshakes. We may have to stop by there post-game, yeah, and maybe get a milkshake stint. That's not a bad idea. we got time at halftime maybe to hustle down there. Young fakes to Roy Dell Williams, goes to the end zone. Another touchdown for Jamison Williams. A 32-yarder for the junior, and I've always dreamed of making a touchdown call with a mouthful of bacon, egg, and cheese. Yeah. No, that's, who didn't grow up doing it that way? <laughs> that's going to hurt Jamison Williams' uh, touchdown reception average. I think it was a 50-yarder earlier, am I correct? Yes. So, yeah, this is going to bring it way down. He had a 58-yarder 
last week. We have a last second substitution as Damian George gets onto the field. 28 to 3 tied. How about this start for Bryce Young, Stinch? 12 for 12, 175 yards and three touchdowns. Pretty sporty. Off play action all the way. Something that Coach Saban said he wanted to see more of. Still got popped a little bit at the end of it. Jamison Williams literally waiting on this football in the end zone. Once again, Mexico State, eyes in that backfield. They check up. Receivers getting behind them. Young hanging in there. Didn't get a shot that time. Not like he did last week. You can see celebrate these guys up front. We talked about it. A reconfigured offensive line. Saw there Chris Owens was forced into service back into center. Finished last year at center, but has been playing at right tackle. It's not an easy thing to do. You know, the, the, the field, the, the responsibilities are totally different. Let's go, Tom. And you could tell that last week. And I think it Let's definitely impacted Tom. Alabama's offensive performance. Having Owens slide in there weren't always clean from an assignment standpoint. I don't know that they identified the defenses accurately was able to practice there all week, and I think it's shown so far. New Mexico State will start at the 25. Let's get another studio update from Dari Noko. Look, guys, uh, what's happening at the Swamp is keeping us awfully busy right now. Just after that third Sanford touchdown, Emory Jones on the keeper. He takes it in. Both teams right at around 200 yards of offense. There is no defense right now at the Swamp. 21 all is the score. What do, wow. you make, what do you make of that stench, what the Gators have gone through defensively this season, and especially the, the last couple itself, weeks? Yeah, you know, it's it's been a, a, a kind of a slow burn. And obviously you make the transition to coordinator. More than concerning this type of performance. Kudos to Sanford, Chris Hatcher. Chris Hatcher can dial up some offensive plays. We've seen him step into this conference before and give teams all they want. Mississippi State, a couple years ago, under Dan Mullen, got more than they wanted from Sanford. Dan Mullen's Gators, maybe their best performance of the year was a loss to Alabama in the Swamp, 31-29, but it has been down. They have headed south since then, especially on the defensive side. It's a first down catch made by Terrell Warner in front of Jalen Armour Davis up to the 39-yard line. Last play from Jonah Johnson. Standing in there with two defenders bearing down on him. And once again, able to deliver the ball well. See that? Once again, pressure. Jonah Johnson, to me, done a good job facing it down. You know, they got the ball out quicker to open up this game, move the pocket some. That time, showing courage, looking right down the gun barrel. Johnson steps into the throw, lofts it out there, and it's almost picked off. It was Daniel Wright who had his hands on it. Second down. Wright's in the game, of course, for DeMarco Hellams, who just got hurt on the last possession. That was like a YMCA throw. It's just kind of a community ball. Who wants it? Three Alabama defenders around it. Shocked that nobody came up with that catch, including an Aggie. Man of the people, Matt Stinchcomb. Always giving shout outs to those great community organizations. Second and 10. Here's the toss to Price. Not getting much. Armour Davis, the junior from St. Paul's Episcopal School in Mobile, Alabama, on the tackle. Is that in Mobile? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know where that was. Did might not have, see that on the roster. Might have a couple of grads here in the booth today. Okay. Once again, just so challenging. Jonah Johnson, talk about his ability to handle the pressure. And at the same time, on these downs, we've seen it opposite of where Anderson is lined up, this time at the top of the line of scrimmage. Johnson throws, and it's incomplete. Alabama able to get pressure off the edge again. Dallas Turner 
The true freshman from Fort Lauderdale has really played well the last couple of weeks. Had two sacks last week. He was in the backfield there. You have to think, you know, if they end up getting they lost a, a pretty darn good edge rusher, Chris Allen, in the opener versus Miami. And if that guy gets back in this lineup before the season's over, so, so now what do you do from a protection standpoint? Because if you got one guy on one edge, you slide it, maybe put a tight end over there, put a protecting back over there to help. But what about the other edge? Bolden had a great return last time. This over his head, caught at the 10. And he's tackled up near the 23-yard line. A 49-yard punt. Tied back on offense with a perfect Bryce Young. Missouri, and it's 7.30 Eastern, number 25, Arkansas, takes on LSU in our SEC Saturday night matchup. Both are also available on the ESPN app. One app, one tap. SEC West standings, the Aggies still in the picture. They need an Alabama loss, and of course they would have the tiebreaker since they beat the Tide. Auburn and Ole Miss after that. Who do you like? Uh, well, you know what? We'll save that. I think, yeah, I think don't, maybe... Don't pick too soon. I think there may be... We'll show your A&M Ole Miss pick yeah, right. coming up here in a little while. Arkansas LSU should be fun tonight down in Tiger Stadium. Brian Robinson doesn't get much. It's tackled by Cyrus Dumas. I can't figure out LSU. That performance last Saturday night here, throwing the kitchen sink defensively at the Alabama offense was so impressive to watch, but we haven't seen that same kind of spirit from LSU throughout Coach Ogeron's last season. Bryce Young will run, and he's down at the 29-yard line. What do you think Arkansas, who's out, who Alabama's playing next week, will get tonight from LSU? Yeah, that's always that's the crapshoot of the whole thing, is that what are you going to get at LSU this year? They go in there and slap Florida around earlier this year. Young, still perfect. First down throw to Mechie. By the way, that last scramble, that was a, due to coverage, by the way, great protection by the guys up front. You know, looking back on it, though, LSU has been almost schizophrenic in their performances. We've had a lot of guys opt out of finishing the season. Robinson finds a hole around the left side. Watch out! Brian Robinson to the house! Sixty-three yards from the man from Hillcrest High School, right here in Tuscaloosa. Earlier in the game, Robinson passed Saran, Stacy, and Glenn Coffey. And Robinson has moved up to 18th all-time in career rushing numbers. And he's got two more touchdowns today as well. Brian now has 29 in his career. These numbers are a bit more like it after only getting 18 yards last week in the entire game. He has 89 in the first half today, a 63-yard touchdown run, all tied here in Tuscaloosa. Dorian Chiswick Watson. We will show you what's going on as it impacts the playoff picture around the country. Florida in a world of trouble. What do you think of Alabama to this point? I'm just watching now to this point to see when Bryce Young throws his first incompletion. No, I don't think that's going to happen. No. This run game for Alabama has been light years better than last year. So Defense, five tackles for loss. Is that good? I'm glad you noticed that. <laughs> I think it is. Guys, we'll see you shortly. <laughs> Well done, Chiz. Always uh, showing that's showing love to the defensive guys, but like I said, Bryce Young, perfect so far. 13 of 13. Brian Robinson with the long 63-yard touchdown run just a moment ago. It's Saturday, which means it's time to represent your school. Show us how big you're going today. Submit your best fan video this weekend to hashtag show your Saturday, and you might just get your 15 seconds of fan fame. Crowd on hand in Tuscaloosa. Be packed next Saturday when Alabama plays number 25 Arkansas here at home. And they've got Auburn on the other side of the state two weeks from today. 
35-3 tied. And the underneath pass is a dropped. They're calling it a fumble. Terrell Warner had it for a moment, coughed it up. And it's marked down at the 22-yard line. Moving on the field was a catch, fumble, recovered by Alabama, first down. An offense that doesn't need any assistance. And another short field, so we've seen special teams set up a short field. And now the defense able to get a turnover or takeaway this time. To say they've been opportunistic is an understatement. Coming into it, and you think about Jordan Battle taking one of the house earlier this year. This time a nice rake. Get that ball out of there. Christian Harris is the one that raked it out, and Justin Eboigby is the one that landed on it to give Alabama the ball at New Mexico State's 22. Alabama's forced to turn over in 88 of the last 94 games they played. And Young is now thrown his first incompletion. He was looking for Jamison Williams, and that ball was not spinning the way that Bryce usually spins him. Nah, that ball was tipped right at the line of scrimmage. Get a hand up. That ball got tipped right as it came out of Bryce Young's hand. Lucky it didn't get picked to go the other way. And there is your first incompletion. True freshman Dylan Early almost the recipient. To the ground and Robinson inside the 20 down to the 18 yard line. Young had a game like this against Southern Miss earlier in the season when he set a school record for completion percentage. He was 20 of 22 passing in that game with five touchdowns. He may set a new standard with the way this one's going. It's a third and six. Alabama number one in the SEC converting on this down. Low snap, gets it off, first and goal inside the 10 to Mechie. Good job up front once again. We talk about some of these things that they're looking to get accomplished. The ground game going a little bit. That time the protection held up and now quick over the ball. Robinson. Hits the hole hard inside the five and down to the three. Had a physical finish to that run. Chris Bell coming up from safety. Saves the touchdown, pays the price on the two-yard line. You see how quickly Alabama keeps going. Young takes it out of Robinson's belly and ends up losing yards. Back to the eight-yard line is Cyrus Dumas stayed at home to make the tackles. Third down. He's looking to read. You see that edge defender, and he pulled it a little bit late. Gave enough time for Dumas to trigger up field for a negative yardage play right here in the red zone. Long cadence, and he snaps it with one on the play clock. Another low snap. End zone too easy. Jamison Williams has three. Mexico State kicked a field goal to start the game. And Alabama has scored the next six touchdowns. Forty-two to three. We'll run the ball a couple of times here in the red zone. Go back to the air to get that touchdown. Maybe the most impressive part of this play was fielding the snap, low and away. Bryce Young 
athletic enough to field it, get it up, and get it out. To Jamison Williams, who is having himself a day. Explosive playmaker, great hands. Had a couple opportunities to block in this game as well. Wherever fun happens. Academy Sports and Outdoors is there. It's 42-3 to here in Tuscaloosa with Matt Stinchcomb. I'm Taylor Zarzer. Let's go to the field in Alyssa Lang. Yeah, guys, Jamison Williams obviously has had a big day so far. Henrito Otoo started the day with a big-time sack. We got to talk to them yesterday about what they wanted to do in this game today, and they immediately lit up, and they were like, we want to get some of our other guys in this game. We want to get some of the younger guys' reps, and we know we have to come out and do our job and do it solid if we want some of our teammates to get some playing time. I think it's safe to say we'll probably see some of those guys today. Oh. Oh, I bet you we, we will. Paul Tyson, Jalen Milrow at quarterback. Number 48, the receiving team signal for a fair catch. However, he was not the one to complete the catch. It was caught by another player at the 12-yard line. It is dead at that spot. First down. That's why there was some confusion on that kickoff. There's Paul Tyson. Should see him in the next couple of drives. He's played sparingly this season as the backup to Bryce Young. Jalen Milrow's got a little bit of action as well, the third team quarterback. Should see more of Trey Sanders and maybe even Demoy Kennedy at tailback for the Tide in the second half. Jonah Johnson almost oh. throws another pick as it was in Armour Davis's hands and he's furious about it. Disappointing he knows because he knows he comes up with this catch. It's likely a house call. Instead, that's a couple of picks really in this game. Clips of Tide secondary could have come up with bouncing off their hands. Johnson, first down run out of bounds near the 25. decision there. Obvious one at that. Nowhere to go with this football. Johnson able to leak out. He kept him on the run. Whether it's intentional or otherwise, they've been kept, kept him moving and when he has stayed on his spot numerous times where he's hit as he's thrown. Look at this big hit. Ryan Branch has been in the backfield several times. He lays the lumber on Andre Bodison. We've heard a couple of nice hits in this game. Listen to this one. Sideline liked it. Crowd did too. It's impressive to see those open field hits now that you can't ever use your helmet and lead with your head. Now you've been trained to make those hits in a different way. Branch did it perfectly there. Whitford has no place to go. Now third down. It's kind of been a big transition, right, in the last 10 years of college football with how you make a big open field hit on the guy with the football. Yeah, I think guys have done a good job of adjusting to it. I mean, we still see it. Every once in a while, flag will come out. But by and large, guys have been smarter about it. Half of that rule, the targeting rule, is to protect the hit earth as much as it is whoever's on the receiving end of these shots. He steps up. And he gets another first down with his feet. That time the Tide with just three rushers. You wonder, you know, can they get there with three? Yeah, they get there with three. Probably get there with one. As long as one of them's number 31. That time Will Anderson shortens the edge, forces Jonah Johnson up in that pocket. But once again, showing some nice scrambling ability to convert the sticks. It's rid of it quickly. And it's a complete... Completion out to P.J. Johnson, the third. 
true freshman from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Pushed out by Brian Branch. Nice design that way. The outside route kind of screening for that throw. Branch having to navigate through traffic just to get to where he can make a tackle. On the handoff, Price doesn't get much. As Malachi Moore makes the tackle, it'll be third down. This has got to be so challenging to play for New Mexico State and go through all of this throughout the entire season. Be down 42-3 to here in the first half. Have Kentucky next week. I realize what it does for their athletic department. I think all of us are knowledgeable of that. But just to compete in a game like this and be down 39 in the first half against one of the best teams in America. Johnson sacked again. Dallas Turner gets the fourth sack for Alabama in the first half. Really the most difficult part for Dallas Turner on this play was fending off the other Bama defenders to get there first. I mean, there was three guys that were right there in position to nearly make that sack. Will Anderson might lobby for the fact that he had a hand yeah, on Johnson right. there. See if he can't get a half sack out of that one. Branch tackled him after he was already tackled. Four snap. Good job fielding it by Carlson. Bolden with the catch at the 15. Flag down on the field after a 49-yard punt with 1.42 to go until halftime. That's the difficulty, right, facing this defense. You get a couple of scramble conversions from your quarterback who's out there battling, but it seems like an inevitability. You face these third downs. If you can get there with three, you can get there with five. Certainly Alabama's proven that repeatedly. Well, Mark Searles will figure this out. And we might get to see Bryce Young one more time, 15 of 16 in the first half for all already over 200 yards passing and four touchdowns. There is no foul for any illegal block in the back. However, during the kick, holding number five receiving team. Penalties half the distance to the goal from the end of the kick in our first down. Coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of Alabama's Million Dollar Band on SEC Network Plus. Start streaming now on the ESPN app. Football program doesn't take a back seat to anybody, and neither does the band. Our friend Russ Moore, who's been our spotter and statistician for several years, he was in the band. You saw some, some pictures of our man, Mr. Moore, earlier today performing back in the Million Dollar Band back in the early 90s. He, uh... You could tell, brilliant saxophonist. <laughs> Is that the right term? Kenny G, stand aside. It really was impressive, man. So is Bryce Young, 13 consecutive to start the game. Was a record for him. Then he had to drop just a moment ago as Roy Dell Williams runs straight ahead up to the 19 yard line here in the waning moments of the first half. Got an injured player down. JoJo Earl and DeMarco Hellams already banged up in the game. And this is Williams who's looking at his right leg. Remember, Alabama's already without two tailbacks. Kamar Wheaton is not available and Jace McClellan is out for the season. This is the backup now to Brian Robinson. Who's favoring his right leg at the end of the play. And this is this is the last thing you want to see, Stench. I mean, you have Trey Sanders behind Brian Robinson, but Alabama's already moved linebackers to running yeah. back with De Demoy Kennedy available in the backfield today. Yeah, that position gets pretty lean pretty quickly, and they're going straight to the locker room. Part of that's a function of where we are in the half. Not putting any weight. Not much anyway. Those legs 
just barely tapping the ground. As you mentioned, you know, one of the one of the goals in a game where clearly you're putting this one away early is to see if you can survive it healthy. Alyssa, let's go down to you. Yeah, you guys mentioned JoJo Earl. I was told he's out for the game. DeMarco Hellams was dealing with that lower body injury, but he has been on the sideline. He has been on the bike. I've been told he'll return. Bryce Young back to the air, and he throws Jamison Williams open, streaking down the sideline. They do say he's out of bounds at the 44-yard line, and Williams is furious about it. He, he wanted another house call. Well, he, he should be furious because he hasn't had many scoring opportunities today. And for him to forfeit that one along the sideline. <laughs> if only he could be more explosive in the passing game. He's, he's like, hey, man, you're hurting my stats. And he did. Yeah, he, he stepped out. 37-yard completion. Boy, he was fun to talk to yesterday. He was, yeah. Young goes back to him again inside the 30. Down at the 29-yard line. He, he mentioned Holman Wiggins, the wide receivers coach, playing a huge role in his decision ultimately to transfer from Ohio State to come here to Tuscaloosa. Young's been playing pitch and catch all day. Here's another one underneath to Robinson, who's Tackled at the 26. Young is 18 of 19. First charge timeout, Alabama. 30 second timeout. As they work on their two minute package that could come in handy against Arkansas and Auburn in the weeks to come. How about what you've seen from number nine in this first half? Uh, yeah, I mean, what do you say about it? <laughs> it's one of those things where you're looking at him and the way he's performed and the way he came out early. One of the things I think that they love the most about Bryce Young, beyond the productivity, is that he's kind of this calm eye amongst the storm. You know, if the game's not going the way that you want, it certainly has today. It's been clean for him. A couple of throws that maybe weren't exactly perfect, hasn't needed to be perfect. He's done an excellent job, and what they like when you talk to these coaches is how he's, his demeanor, how he conducts himself, his poise. You know, right now, he would be the favorite, I would think, you among think? the Heisman candidate. Well, I mean, look, part of it is you look at his numbers, where he's been, and also the team that he's playing on, and some of the challenges, frankly, that they have faced offensively. He said great protection in this first half. He takes off and runs out of bounds with a flag coming down on the field. Coach Saban and Bill O'Brien, the offensive coordinator, both raved about this guy's demeanor, his preparation, yeah. his leadership. He, he just, he does it all right. He, you wouldn't think that a guy that is becoming a starter for the first time would have that kind of maturity. Holding number 13 defense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. It was also the first down. But like we were saying, Bill O'Brien said, as he made this huge transition, when he, which he said was huge for him, yeah. he's got a quarterback that is just so natural and mature in every way. Yeah, I mean, he spoke glowingly of Bryce Young. I mean, to the point where you think about the quarterbacks that Bill O'Brien has coached, he said, this guy's one of the best quarterbacks I've been around. Think about the magnitude of that statement and some of the players that he's coached at quarterback. Young stays in there, surveys the whole field, and Robinson slips, but evidently the knee didn't go down, so he's down at the 11-yard line. Another timeout will be called after the pickup of four. 29 ticks left. That effort by Robinson just to keep that ball alive. Makes the catch. Lost his footing. Did a great job of posting up that hand just to stay up off that turf and keep that run alive. Talk about Jamison Williams. He's had a day. What about Robinson? You know, obviously, very difficult sledding to say the least. Last week, they got the ball out on the perimeter. He's participated in the passing game as well. Physical run down there on the goal line. Bring your own block. We can't block all of them. He didn't need them. And then, of course, show him your taillights. A little bit of speed down the sideline. 
runs away from the Aggie defense. Number four putting together a strong performance. Don't know how much more we'll see of him in this game. But he's made the most of it. Last week, the tie when you net it out averaged 0.2 yards an attempt. I saw Robinson there, he's averaging 11 yards a touch after that big long run. Alabama with just one timeout left. Robinson's wide open out of the backfield, and he's tackled right near the first down marker. Showing those hands off today a little bit is Brian Robinson. Started the game out that way. And a guy that, you know, we just saw Roy Dell Williams going in. You wonder how much of Brian Robinson we would have seen on this series if Roy Dell didn't go down early in this series. First and goal for Bama. 40, oh, he dropped it. Right in the breadbasket of Jaleel Billingsley. Junior from Chicago. He's had an up-and-down season at the tight end spot this, e this year. Yeah, the coaches, I think, in general, acknowledging at tight end, they've got talent and capability, but it has been inconsistent, which is kind of what was the watchword coming into this week. Coach Saban, I think, hammered it home, and there, a drop in the end zone. Second incompletion for Young. Gets to try again, and this time it works. Billingsley makes up for it with the touchdown here. Bryce Young was 20 of 22 passing against Southern Miss back at the end of September. He's 21 of 23 today with five touchdown passes. He's even eclipsed his own record for completion percentage with this performance in the first half. Pretty efficient. I mean, th these are numbers that would be a challenge versus air. I mean, you've got a defense out there that's working to avoid it. A guy that just looks like he's in total command of what it is that he wants to do, even when things break down. And I love the fact that they go right back to Billingsley. Gets a drop at the end zone. Hey, let's see if we can't get this guy back on track as quickly as we possibly can. Look, they're working on their two-minute offense. They're calling timeouts, all those things. But there's also individual performances and guys are going to need. They've got two more conference games, two more division games to finish this season. They've got a challenging opponent, to say the least, at the end of the Iron Bowl rivalry game. They've got to have everything. They're going to need everything. They're expecting a playoff run from this team, a championship run. You gotta have tight ends step up. Latou gets his touchdown catch. Billingsley gets his touchdown catch. They need that tight end position to step up a little bit. Smart to go back to him. And Nick Saban has set the most remarkable standard to the point where when you're nine and one on the season stench, or I guess eight and one going into this game, but nine and one once it's over, it doesn't feel as much like maybe a nine and one usually would when you're ranked number two in the country. You got issues on the offensive line with injuries. You, now you have depth concerns in the backfield. You have a secondary that's been in transition this season. And all of the fans are concerned about some of those blemishes that haven't appeared in national championship seasons, which is why you work on all these things today so that you can have a better chance to win the rest of your games. And yeah, they're definitely taking advantage of that opportunity. You know, it's a challenge sometimes from a motivational standpoint. You hear what Coach Saban said off the top. We want these guys to take advantage of their opportunity. We want to put what's out there, a championship level effort, individually. And so far, I think that they've been able to rise to that challenge. He said, when I watch you on film, I don't watch what team you're playing against. If I watch you. Well, if you're watching Bryce Young in the first half, you saw a spectacular performance in Alabama leading 49-3 at the half over New Mexico State. And Coach Saban is with Alyssa Lang.
Coach, how would you evaluate your offensive performance in the first half? Well, I think it was good. I think we got 49 points up there. I know we set up one with a you know, block punt, but uh, I think it's been pretty efficient. We've had better balance. I think it's better. What do you want to see more of in the second half? Well, I think we're going to get to play a lot of players, so I'm going to see how those guys respond. We need to get them some experience. Um, so, you know, we want to start the second half so we know how to come out and play in the second half. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you. You saw the graphic on the bottom of the screen. He's going to pass Mac Brown for the most wins by any active head coach. With Matt Stinchcomb, I'm Taylor Zarza. Alyssa Lang is on that field, and we saw the Crimson Tide destroy New Mexico State in every phase. Yeah, I mean, you can see offensively in the type of first half that Bryce Young has had. Really, really impressive. Really building off of what was a lackluster performance a week ago, and I think they've answered a lot of questions so far. Let's take a look at the bold move brought to you by Velveeta. Yeah, a lot of conversation around the offense, and there's 49 points on the board. I get it, but what about defensively? Will Anderson, once again, just wreaking havoc in offensive backfields. Has it just been him? Fellow defensive players, they're coming up making big plays, game-changing type plays. Nearly a strip fumble on the sack from Henry Toto off the edge. They've had other guys stepping up, of course, as well. It hasn't just been Will Anderson. You think about Dallas Turner, the true freshman. He's gotten in there a couple of times and given short fields to an offense that does not need them but has certainly capitalized off of them. Incredible no numbers for Nick Saban's defense. Got a block punt in special teams. Jamison Williams and Bryce Young were playing toss in the first half. Bolton gets it at the seven. And he's down at the 22 yard line. Should see some new faces for the Crimson Tide in the second half on offense. John Tice, Paul Tyson not yet talking on the bench over there. We'll see if Paul gets his number called in just a minute, but you get a little bit more Bryce Young to start the second half. He was sensational, 21 of 23, 272 yards and five touchdowns in the first half. Trey Sanders in there, the court, uh, running back rather for the first time. And here's Trey. Stutter step, doesn't get much. Trey, I'm sure they're watching closely to what Sanders is going to do in this second half stench with Roy Dell Williams injured in the first half, Sanders now is really the only other experienced back that Alabama has that's healthy. Right. You see there, I don't know if that was a little dummy cadence. Like the Aggies jumped early along their front defensively. But you're right, yeah, I mean, getting thin at running back. Offside, number 91 defense made contact. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Justin Segura, sophomore from Scottsdale, Arizona. So Young trying to pad what are already some record-breaking stats. Bolden flashing across, and the handoff straight ahead goes to Sanders, and Trey stays on his feet out to the 40-yard line. Big 214-pound tailback. This from Port St. Joe, Florida, gains 14 on the play. Another nice run to the left side of the Alabama offensive front. Keeping in mind a new face in there, left guard. Tommy Brown doing a pretty good job in relief of Javion Cohen. Sanders, nine more. Think of Alabama running the football in the last handful of years, and you think of Damian Harris and Bo Scarborough and Najee Harris and Brian Robinson in his fifth season. So many options. All of a sudden, after Robinson, it's kind of dicey. Yeah, it's been a little bit more of a, a singular effort 
at running back this season in the ground game. Sanders isn't touched until he gets down inside the 40-yard line, down to the 39. Nice cut in the backfield that time by Sanders to see that backside opportunity. You see him press the hole to the left, rolls it back to the right. Physical finish. Takes a nice shot there at the end of it as well. See him running all the way down the field, inside the 35, down to the 34-yard line. Five more. Sanders only with 129 yards rushing on the season coming into this game. Robinson, by the way, had nine carries for 99 yards, two touchdowns, including a 63-yard scamper. Young will throw under pressure, and he took a shot. All come out two, and it's recovered by New Mexico State. The run and play action. They pull Tommy Brown across the formation. You cannot let up. You see him kind of put on the brakes a little bit, and instead he get ed gets edged right now. It's Ojo again, I believe. On the rush, Chris Ojo, who has made some nice plays in this game. Ball came out for Bryce Young. We had a near turnover in the first half. Trayshawn Holden looked like the ball came out, was ruled as if it were on, it got overturned upon replay. This time, Gibson Tide turned it over to the fumble for Bryce Young. That's not what you want to see on the first drive of the second half if you're Coach Saban and Bill O'Brien. Johnson throws, it was caught by Harity at the 41 yard line. I was wondering if we would see Bryce Young come back out for one more drive in the second half and comes out there and takes a huge shot. Tommy Brown has his head down on the bench over there after letting Ojo get that free shot. Yes, Emil Hekior. Yeah, the right guard. Yeah, it's something it's I or what? Ekior and Tommy Brown have gotten a lot of action today on the offensive line for Alabama after that run for a few for New Mexico State. So this will start a set up a third down for the Aggies. They have to get to the Alabama 48. We're looking at the numbers at halftime. Four sacks already by this Alabama defense. Johnson, first down throw to Jared Wyatt. Might get a very favorable spot. He certainly he was ahead of uh, where the 48-yard line was, but you're wow. right. I mean, they, they put that ball a half a yard behind where he ended up on the play, and, and they're going to be short and go for it here on fourth down. See if they can't capitalize on the quick change, the takeaway. Right here at midfield, and why not? Alabama had trouble getting off the field on fourth down last week. LSU was five of seven in that game. And they get it here to the 48-yard line, very close to where the catch was made on third down. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Another crack at it, Jawan Price able to muscle that ball forward and get the fourth down conversion. And as you mentioned, kind of a down that's plagued the defense for now two games in a row. Jawan Price converting it with the run. Now Johnson back to the air and throws another lob down there and too far in front of Terrell Warner. Second down. Johnson took a wicked shot as he let this ball go. A lot of toughness being shown by number 10 of New Mexico State. 
in this Alabama pass rush. Once again, Anderson down low around his feet. Mm. Henry Toe Toe. Clean shot. Didn't go to his head. The ball had just been released. But a violent shot nonetheless. Here's Anderson coming around the edge, and down he goes. You can see it happening from a mile away. And Will Anderson with his second sack. Pete Golding loving watching that. Anderson now with 12 and a half sacks on the season. Setting up a third and 11. Gets it rid of it. It'll be fourth down for New Mexico State inside the 45-yard line. Nick Saban said something to us yesterday that was one of the best quotes I've ever heard. He said, Will Anderson has, he said, a bunch of other players in the world have butts. Will Anderson just has a bunch of ands. Yeah. Meaning some players you say, oh, they're great. They can catch the football. They can run. But they can't do that. Anderson has no butts. Anderson just has, he's fast, he's big, and he can tackle, and he can sack the quarterback, and he's the hardest worker on the team. Punt goes inside the five yard line, actually marked out at the eight. 8.03 to go in the third quarter. All is brought to you by B. It's what's for dinner. Beautiful President's Mansion here on the campus of the University of Alabama, 49 to three. Second rank tied over New Mexico State and Paul Tyson in at quarterback for Alabama, the sophomore from Trussville, Alabama. Yes, Coach Bryant's hey. great grandson. Big six foot five. Hands it off to Trey Sanders, who gets a, a couple. Paul's more of a traditional drop back passer stench. I love this that Bill O'Brien said yesterday. He said that Paul has made his body twitchier. Yeah, that's something that you can do, I guess. Well, up your twitch factor or something. Either way, they say that he's able to. Sanders doesn't get anything there. Wrapped up in the backfield. It's third down now. Here's Bill O'Brien on the right. Paul Tyson on the left. O'Brien says, as you would imagine, Tyson knows everything about the history of Alabama football. Given the family that Paul comes from, you would certainly expect that. He's also dealing with the new center, Seth McLaughlin. Snapping these back on a third and nine. Tyson to the air has plenty of time and dumps it off. Up to the 21 to Treshawn Holden for an Alabama first down. Holden able to make some amends, a near miss, almost a fumble there in the first half. Nice catch, nice conversion. An entirely new offensive front save for Darian George there at right tackle, number 74. He might mess around and just stay at right tackle for the balance of the season. He's played pretty well. Damian, the sophomore from Houston, Texas. Sanders, no place to go. Immediately tackled by Donovan King. It's a loss on the play. Yeah, going back to Tyson for a moment and his knowledge of Alabama football, that, that's not surprising. What is surprising, Stinch, is that Brian Robinson and Roy Dell Williams are really the only other skill guys that get any kind of play that are from the state of Alabama. You know, usually in the history of this program, you see so many guys that grew up somewhere in the state. Yeah, you got guys from California, Utah, and Missouri, and Georgia, and Canada. Nick Saban has made Alabama worldwide. Tyson, too high, intended for Brooks. It's third down. Well, they are 
often national champions, so they should be represented nationally, I suppose, from a roster standpoint. I mean, you'd be hard pressed to not know what's been going on down here in Tuscaloosa. An aspiring college football player. See what's coming up. Just to correct that, South Carolina and Missouri is at. 4 o'clock in Como. Arkansas and LSU is at 7.30 tonight. Good grief, what a hit on Christian Leary. This Ojo again. How many times have we seen him today? He was in there on the Trayshawn Holder near the fumble. He was in there on that hit for Bryce Young. Then ended up with a fumble. And then a big shot there on Leary. So Ojo had a pretty good day. I mean, it's not going to show up, obviously, in the win-loss column or even on the scoreboard, but number three for the Aggie defense did to get a pretty good performance. Burn up to punt from his own end zone. Barely gets it off on the play clock. Lawrence Dixon comes up to field it at the 50. And New Mexico State will have it in Alabama, Alabama territory and commitment to our country. I'm from Montgomery, Alabama. I'm a member of the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault. I'd like to give a shout out to the best college football team in the nation. Roll Tide. We thank every single one of you for your service to our country so that we can come and watch a college football game. And this was terrific to watch. The world famous striking snakes in pregame right after the anthem came out and they got fired up as they got to be on the field yeah. just a few moments ago. That was a cool flyover and an even cooler reaction from them down there on the field. Thank you every single one of you for your service. New Mexico State in Alabama territory. Jonah Johnson's gone the whole way and He's been taking hit after hit. This one delivered by Shane Lee. And he just bounces right back up. I can't say enough about him. And this is a guy that, you know, it's been a little bit slow to get up from time to time. But the shots that he's taken, they're starting to add up. He just bounces back up, looks at the sideline, gets that play call. He's ready to go again. He's been sacked six times in the game. That's a no gain on that one. Another big hit after a completion of seven yards. This one by Jordan Battle. Still in there after P.J. Johnson made the catch. The third shot that we've heard in this game. Some of these Crimson Tide secondary players coming up, laying the wood on the receivers of the Mexico State Aggies. On third down, it's a deflected ball. It's Tim Smith that got his hand on it, it's fourth down. The pocket collapsing almost immediately, inside out, nowhere to go. Hey, Johnson. Maybe the fight or flight response, just get rid of this football, man. We'll take another shot here. Missed opportunity there. Defense gets a stop. They get the ball at midfield and just couldn't do much with it. Another chance for Slade Bolton, but this goes over his head and into the end zone. Crimson Tide. Gets it at the 20. Paul Tyson. Update for the first time today. Florida leads Samford. Emory Jones to Kamore Gamble. Florida gave up 42 points in the first half. Most they've ever allowed to anybody in a half, but they lead by a score now, guys. I think they were almost a 40-point favorite. The Gators were in that game against Samford and find themselves in the lead with 49 points. That's how many Alabama has, but New Mexico State, after striking first with a 50-yard field goal, has not scored since. 
Bryce Young gave way to Paul Tyson. And Tyson throws to Robbie Oots for his first career catch. Speaking of Bryce Young, let's check out our great performance brought to you by State Farm. It was strong, and it was strong right out of the gate. I mean, you think about those two incompletions. But otherwise, just a commanding performance from Bryce Young. A little more of the same of what we've once we've seen from him this year. Trey Sanders with a first down run. Yes, yeah, so strong that he set career highs with five touchdown passes today. He broke the school record for completion percentage, which he already had when he was 20 of 22 against Southern Miss earlier this season. 21 of 23 today. Back to the ground with Trey Sanders running in front of, behind rather, that offensive line, Alyssa. Hey guys, after Alabama's last offensive drive, I was standing over here on the sidelines and O-line coach Doug Marone was getting pretty fired up, getting on his group of offensive linemen despite being shuffled around, despite dealing with some injuries. And it's something that, that they've emphasized all week. Nick Saban said we have to do a better job of keeping that pocket clean the rest of the year for Bryce Young. Alyssa, I loved yesterday when Doug Marone, who used to be the head coach of the Buffalo Bills and the Jacksonville Jaguars, came into our coaches' meeting and said, I don't have to do these meetings anymore. I just came to see my boy Stench. Yeah, you know, he's, he's a heck of a line coach now. I mean, this guy's been around the game a long time. The head coach at Syracuse, offensive line coach for the New Orleans Saints. Been a number of different stops at the collegiate level as well. Coach some really good offensive fronts. It's Demoy Kennedy, who was a linebacker a couple weeks ago. Now he's a tailback for Alabama due to all the injuries Alabama's had at that position group. Yeah, and even more injuries today, right? I mean, you think about what happened with Roy Dell Williams, who, as we mentioned, we aren't going to see more of him. And Doug Marone charged along with Bill O'Brien, a guy that he's coached with before. And those guys go way back. They were on the same coaching staff. Back when they were together at Georgia Tech. Kennedy, a, a sophomore from Theodore, Alabama, just outside of Mobile, down in lower Alabama. How, how far outside of Mobile? Would it be considered 20, like a suburb? 20 minutes, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Like a burb of Mobile? Sure. Right near, actually call it down the bay. If you're in Theodore, instead of over the bay, you're down the bay. Okay, that makes sense. Tyson. Nice catch. It's Javon Baker. Baker, the sophomore from Atlanta, Stinchcomb country. Nice response here by the offense, right? You go out there, stub your toe almost immediately, three and out. You challenge on the sideline. Doug Marone, I'm sure the other position groups as well. And they're able to work their way down the field now with Largely reserves. Tyson wanted to throw it deep. Throws to the sideline, incomplete. Ooh. I was looking for a Jai Hall, but too far in front of him. Three quarters in the books here in Tuscaloosa. 49-3, Alabama. 49-3, Crimson Tide over New Mexico State as we start the fourth quarter. Welcome back to SEC Network Football. Presented by Allstate with Alyssa Lang and Matt Stinchcomb. I'm Taylor Zarzer, Bill O'Brien's offense with 480 total yards today. Maybe most important is the speed they've played with today's stench and also what they've done on the ground. Yeah, the run game got going a little bit. The tempo especially, I think they seemed very intentional about that. Didn't have to stick with it as much, but it definitely seemed like in those early series they were wanting to get going, get in the rhythm. Protect a little bit better, of course, after last week. Getting some new looks, different looks entirely from the LSU defense, especially on the third down. Some of the pressures that they brought that they haven't shown all season. Bill O'Brien calling the play on third and five, and it's a good one to Javon Baker. First down tied inside the 20. O'Brien said that this has been the biggest transition he's ever made as a coach this year. That in the past, he's always brought his playbook yeah. with him, and they've said, hey, we want to utilize what you've always been playing. We're calling. And it's caught inside the 10, tiptoeing out of bounds, is Tyu Jones-Bell. He's out near the five, but O'Brien said that 
when he was offered the job by Nick Saban, Saban said, here's your playbook. Right. Yeah. It was interesting, too, how he said Mac Jones, who was here training, was instrumental in introducing him to this offense and how things were done. That, uh, you know, it's more than just terminology. Sometimes you can just swap terms in and out, but just an entirely different offensive structure. It's been a real challenge for him that he said he's really embraced and enjoyed. Trey Sanders, touchdown time. Second career touchdown for Trey. And the first for the Crimson Tide in the second half. Robinson with 99 yards rushing today. Trey now over 60, has 66 yards with a touchdown. Getting a big hug from the bench and Roy Dell Williams went out with an injury in the first half, so they're going to be leaning on these two the rest of the season. Reichard makes it 56 to 3. How about that answer? You start the second half with a fumble, then you punt, you get challenged on the sideline, you go 11 plays, 80 yards, and in part by new Coca Cola Zero Sugar. And Wendy's Hot and Crispy Fries. Try the best combo ever today. And anytime you're in Tuscaloosa, you got to try Rama Jamas. It's where we ate like a champion today. Mm -hmm. I think the milkshake machine is now working. Is that where Alyssa went? Is she, oh, yeah. is she there? That's like, a, that's you know, when you're a champion, you get a trophy, and the trophy is a milkshake. New Mexico State will start at their eight-yard line after Jawan Price fields it there. Dari Noka, what's happening in the swamp? Well, I'm not going to give you that one, believe it or not. I'm going to go to the Big 12. Oklahoma undefeated but in some trouble. Jerry Bohannon into the end zone for Baylor. They lead it 17-7. By the way, Spencer Rattler has replaced the freshman Caleb Williams and OU's in all kinds of trouble. Guys, Mississippi State has scored 20 unanswered on the Plains. Will Rogers to Dylan Johnson. They were down 28-3. It's now 28-23, late third. Okay, all right. So you got some close ones there. Florida's up two touchdowns the way on Samford. It didn't sound like Darian was too excited about what's happening with his with his alma mater, the Sooners. Juwan Price gets up to the nine yard line. That's been maybe the most head scratching of the, the rankings so far. I don't know that I disagree with it, but I just didn't expect Oklahoma to be number eight in the poll. You look at what they've done so far this season, they haven't really played any significant opponents until yeah. today, and look what's happening. Yeah, and it's the Baylor team that just lost to TCU, who's without a head coach, Gary Patterson, saying thanks for the memories. I'm not going to finish this one out. How about Dari? He's covering multiple conferences. Oh, he's all, he's, he's on, top he's on fire. Running is Johnson. This guy is going to have a hard time getting out of bed tomorrow. Drew Sanders and Daniel Wright converging on him. Love the guy. Look at him. He bounces right back up. I mean, it's just, it's been impressive. And many times, you know, hard to watch. He's taking some nasty shots. The guys around his legs taking shots up top. He goes right back to that line of scrimmage, ready to reset his offense, see if they can't get that ball moving. They've had a few moments, there's no doubt. But it's so hard to find cracks in this defense. the backfield. It's a first down catch by Alex Escobar up to the 22 yard line. Johnson and New Mexico State will meet Kentucky next Saturday, same time, noon Eastern on SEC Network. Kentucky's got a very good defense as well. So Johnson could be taking more shots in the bluegrass next week. Got a guy, Josh Paschal, of course. Others with the pressure. Let's see Jonah Johnson and his numbers from today. Difficult proposition. Escobar doesn't get anything as Chris Braswell makes the tackle, a sophomore from Baltimore. 
extension. Alabama's got Arkansas here at home next Saturday. That's an improved team that's playing LSU tonight, a, a team that Alabama has owned over the past decade. I got a feeling that Sam Pittman's going to give them a much, much more significant challenge next Saturday than most of the Arkansas games that Alabama fans have seen through the years. Yeah, definitely enjoy the resurgence under Sam Pittman. Johnson wants to throw it deep, but nothing's open, and he just has to throw it away as he feels all the pressure. No way. And they're going to throw the flag down here. Well, that was a intentional grounding that was uh, on New Mexico State. They're the chances to win for Alabama. 93% against Arkansas, 79% against Auburn. I got to say, I, I don't know that the percentages should be that high for Alabama in either one of those games. I would certainly favor them in those games. Yeah. But hey, I'm with you. 93% is like a, what, a near certainty, right? And you push it even harder for Auburn. Now, Auburn is, is leaking right now points to Mississippi State as we speak. And obviously, slapped around pretty good by the Aggies last week. Talk more about what's ahead for the Crimson Tide in just a moment. 3.30 today, number six Michigan in a tight one at Happy Valley up 14 to six and number eight Oklahoma trailing in Waco 17 to seven. What do you think about your alma mater on Rocky Top at 3.30 today, Stitch? This will be the greatest challenge that defense has seen all year. Didn't think he would say that versus Tennessee given the defections that Josh Heupel and that program endured in the wake of the Jeremy Pruitt era. But boy, they have figured things out offensively and they can be dangerous, there's no doubt. Interesting to see how that dog defense responds. Third and 10, it's Warner. He gets up near the 25 yard line. Nice pursuit by Christian Story, the safety there to force a fourth down. Yeah, Tennessee gave Alabama fits for about three quarters. Alabama distanced themselves in the fourth quarter, scoring four touchdowns in that game, but that was a one possession game for about 45 minutes of game time here at Bryant-Denny a few weeks ago. Yeah, it's another one of those tempo teams. One that I think, you know, practically speaking, in game, might go as fast or faster than anyone in this conference, including the old Misses. It's like a procedure penalty pre-snap here. But because of that, and the way that they're playing at quarterback, Hendon Hooker when he's been healthy this year, the fact that he's a dual threat, a true dual threat, um, and Josh Heupel as a play caller has been creative. They run the football effectively. They can get those big plays in the passing game. Uh, I think that it could be a closer game than it probably otherwise would be. Certainly not uh, as close as I would have anticipated it being coming into the season. Offside, defense in the neutral zone causing a reaction. The player lined up on number 43. The five-yard penalty is still fourth down. Coach Saban yeah. never, ever stops, and he disagrees. Yeah, a 53-point game. Ten minutes to play in the fourth, and I don't like that call. Well, either you agree or you don't, right? Getting after it. A documentary on NFL Network on him a few months ago on a football life, and uh, he was making fun of himself for some of the headsets that he is ruined through the years. Slade Bolden receives it at the 34-yard line. Coming up next, South Carolina squares off against Missouri. And at 7.30 Eastern, number 25, Arkansas takes on LSU in our SEC Saturday night matchup. Both are also available on the ESPN app. One app, one tap. That game next, our guy Dave Neal, Deuce McAllister, and Andrea Carter coming up at 4 Eastern time. That, that's going to be fun to watch especially after what Shane Beamer's team did last week to the Gators. Yeah, kind I feel of, like that's a toss-up. It, it does feel that way, doesn't it? I mean, you know, Connor Baselak struggled this season, has struggled. Tyler Beatty's looked good for them at running back. But the emergence of Jason Brown at quarterback for South Carolina, which we saw last week, yep. and then those backs all of a sudden got healthy at the right time. Jalen Milrow, a true freshman in at quarterback, and it's dropped by Oots. Second down. By the way, Alyssa, you're not allowed to tap the app while you're driving. I know you're 
fired up about watching the Gamecocks <laughs> in Mizzou. What if I just put the app on and prop it up on the dashboard while I drive back <laughs> to also the airport? Unsafe. Also unsafe. Yep, audio only. Guys, you mentioned Milrow in the game now. Uh, we had a fun moment yesterday with Bill O'Brien. He was talking about speedsters on the team. Look at that. I mean, there it is right there, Alyssa. Right on cue. Uh, he's, I said, is Jamison Williams the fastest guy on the team? He said, ah, maybe Milrow might, <laughs> might have him. And then Jamison walked through the room. We asked him the same question. And of course, Jamison was like, absolutely not. I'm faster. But I don't know. Maybe we need to do a little 40 yard dash race. Oh, man. I've seen that before. I've retired, by the way. Okay. Yeah. A few years ago, on the other side of the state, Alyssa and I had a a, a finish that went down to the wire. That would be fun to watch. Much more fun than watching me run. Jamison Williams and Jalen Milrow. Milrow stands back there, wants to throw. But when the pocket collapses and you can do this, it's just such an extra weapon. Picks up about seven. It's twitching. That guy's twitchy. 6'2", 210. Looks the part. We were down there on the field earlier. We thought we'd see a lot of more design QB runs. Of course, we have. That one was a scramble, the previous play with the keep. Can't get out this time as the pocket collapses. And it was Eric Bailey on the sack. Did you run the 40 at the combine? No, I didn't run it at the combine. I did it at the, on my pro day. It makes a lot of sense, too, because if you run 40 yards as an offensive lineman, you're chasing down an interception. It's, what is it? Or, what you're, is, or you're ineligible and you yeah, get called for a Or you're a just really confused. Yeah. I can so see you questioning why you're doing this. Milrow steps up. He's exciting to watch down inside the 40. First down, Alabama. Nice scramble. Coaching opportunity on that one. Put the football away in traffic. Don't hold it like you're going to throw it once you pass the line of scrimmage. So now tuck it. Got that ball out. High and tight. Bar see the ball come out with Bryce Young getting hit from the blind side earlier. The ground in Leary. Again, Des Moines Kennedy was a linebacker. Christian Leary. Started the season more as a receiver. Those guys have been pressed into action into the running back group because of the injury today to Roy Dell Williams. Jace McClellan out for the season of losing him about a month ago, and Kamar Wheaton's also unavailable. Here's Leary with some good speed inside the 25. Start out of receiver, get some carries at running back, blocking punts. Busy man here today. Ryan Robinson had a great half. Nine carries, 99 yards, two touchdowns at a 63-yard scamper. Much more like it after last week's performance. Louis running hard down to the 18-yard line. So Alabama improves to nine and one with this victory today. And next week against Arkansas Stems, they have a chance to tie Florida State with 14 consecutive 10 plus win seasons. Bobby Bowden's Knowles did it from 1987 through 2000. And Nick Saban's team has a chance to match that next week. Ty U Jones Bell with that catch. And all the more impressive in, in that regard. Take nothing away from what FSU under Coach Bowden was able to accomplish. But in this conference, when you've got teams that are contending for national titles, even winning national titles, the Auburns, the LSUs, teams that are elite in that regard in Georgia, you just keep on rolling, just like this offense. Ja'Cory Brooks, the freshman from Miami, with his first collegiate touchdown. There is a flag down, though. Holding number 14 offense.
10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. Take that one off the board as Jones Bell commits the penalty. It's been an exceptionally clean game really on both sides. You see out there in a the holding call. And I guess. I don't know. As offensive lineman, I definitely would have said no, but since it was a receiver, I'll agree. Milro. Just hard to get a hit on him. He's just so quick. Alabama with a season high in, in rushing yards. Before that play, they had 244. Got a couple of nice explosive runs, too. You think about the long run down the sideline by Brian Robinson. A couple of nice runs from Trey Sanders as well before he gave way to Leary. Back to the air, to the end zone, incomplete. And as Brooks couldn't make the catch, it looked like it might have been deflected at the line of scrimmage. Going back to the ground game stench, Nick Saban, you give him all the credit in the world for how he has continued to adapt and and have the best program throughout his tenure in Tuscaloosa. But it's still kind of crazy to see that his team is 74th in the country running the football this year. Would not have guessed that would ever be the case here at Alabama. Some growing pains, no doubt. Milrow. Again, it's off the fingertips of Ja'Cory Brooks. It's fourth down. You know, it's interesting. Some other players on that play Kind of calling for a P.I. Fans wanted it. Corey Brooks didn't say anything. And it definitely looks like Chris Ojo was holding his left arm back. You're going to give the, the backup kicker, Jack Martin, a chance to come in. The junior from Dothan. It's a 29-yard field goal try. It's 59 to 3. All Crimson Tide today on a beautiful Saturday in T Town. And Dari. And Mississippi State's comeback on Alabama's arch rival. Now with the lead over there, Jordan Hare, 29 28. Paying attention on the ESPN app, the Gators are only up four. 56 to 52. With under 12 minutes to go in that one. You know, there's a good one tonight on ESPN. Fought Hemming Hemingway Stadium. <laughs> Those are not, I, think Sco, I think Scoey's also going with the Aggies. We all went Texas A&M here. Alyssa, you expect a close game there with the Rebels and the Aggies, or you, you think Jimbo cruises to victory there. I feel like it's week 11 and I just don't know anything anymore because six weeks ago there was no chance I would have picked A&M in that game. But knowing Lane Kiffin, knowing Jimbo Fisher, that game's close. Man, you might be right, actually. The way those teams can play. Weston Egan in at quarterback. He gets a, he gets a couple of yards. It's Drew Sanders. Makes the tackle. So Tim Sullivan is our producer today, filling in for Tom Schofield, and he's picking Ole Miss. Okay. So. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, Matt Corral's been banged up a lot. That's a really good defense, too. Omari Samuels gets a couple of yards. Steve Turnberger, if, if you can talk in my head, who you got, Ole Miss or Texas A&M? Okay, Burks, wow. Burks, truck, the, truck, the, the truck. truck, the truck is going with Ole Miss. Wow, okay. On-air commentators are going with the Aggies. Might have to put a little action on that. No, it is. Those dudes live out there in California. It's the lane effect, I think. <laughs> Burks just had so much fun at Oxford. That's why he's picking Ole Miss. Third and six. Egan bounces it. At the feet of his receiver, it is fourth down. Okay, so this is why the truck is picking the Rebels. Matt Corral is getting closer to 
100% after that freaky looking injury he had yeah. in Auburn a couple weeks ago. Yeah, he's tough, there's no doubt. I mean, for a long time, you're thinking Heisman candidate, and you know, I guess he's still up there. Probably not the leader. What about the rest of the booth? Nobody wants to chirp up, got awful yeah, quiet. Yeah, just ask Russ, Russ will give us a pick. He, he said no comment. Matt, a spotter today, he's also going with the Aggies. So the booth, the booth is united with the Aggies. The truck likes the Rebels. <laughs> the booth is malnourished. I think They're Alabama, Alabama fans out, are cheering for the Rebels, too. <laughs> Say hi, and we can't wait to get the season started in February. I know you're going to be pleased with this year's team. we got a great group. I know everybody's ready to go. and. Of course, we're going to have the best fans in the country once again at the Rhodes House. Roll Tide. How about that? Patrick Murphy's done such an incredible job as the softball coach, taking Alabama to the Women's College World Series last year, winning the SEC. As Alabama's finishing things up. And a new quarterback is Braxton Barker. Jay Barker's son. Gets to play a little quarterback today, Stinch. How about that? Another great legacy at the quarterback position. The pantheon of great players that have come through the Alabama program. He looks just like his dad, too, doesn't he? I can't see that far. <laughs> I'll tell you what happens. Don't worry. It's a handoff to Des Moines Kennedy. And he doesn't get much. Going back to Patrick Murphy, I, I think a big misnomer across the country is that Alabama is just a bunch of football fans, and they don't really support their other schools, uh, their other programs. That's hogwash. They love their softball. They love their basketball team. Alabama basketball team won again last night, start the season. Nate Oates has got one of the best programs in the country after the great season they had last year, winning the Southeastern Conference. We saw in the graphic there. Golf program's been terrific. Gymnastics has been great here. Yeah. Alabama fans are fans of all Alabama sports. Third and 11, Barker. Nice catch made. Right at the marker by Ajay Hall. True South, look where it is. Sunday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Mobile Bay, Alabama, Mr. Stinchcomb. Now, would that be would that be up bay or, or down bay? No, or? just in the bay. Okay. Well, I mean, you could be over the bay or Alongside. down the bay. Yes, eating. A lot of prepositions. On Mobile Bay okay. or the causeway, for that matter. All kinds of geographic opportunities, Mobile. Can't wait to watch that. Des Moines Kennedy. What do you think they're going to spotlight? Where's John T. Edge going to go? It, it Hazard mean, it, a guess. If it were, if it was up to, he's going to Pirates Cove. You think? Our spotter Matt Zarzer is a Mobile aficionado. Says that's where he's headed. I, I mean, if I were going on Mobile Bay, I would go to the original Oyster House. That would be my spot. But I know that was I mean, the Bluegill is, a, is another good spot oh, down there. Sounds delicious. Wow. Maybe they go to all three. Felix Fish Camp. I got to give them a, a shout out. Sure. Too. What was it that Jamison Williams said to go to? Catch a taste or something like that yesterday? Jamison Williams has got a new wings place here in, in Tuscaloosa, and he says he's been going there every day. <laughs> that seems excessive. I'm sure it's delicious and all. Every day for anywhere. Well, this was what you expected today from the Crimson Tide. I know Coach Saban's probably worried about a few of those injuries, though. Most notably Roy to Williams. Roy Dell Williams and also to JoJo Earl, his punt returner. DeMarco Hellams went out of the game with an injury, too. Missing a couple offensive linemen in this game, although I think you can anticipate getting both of them back. Kennedy just running things out and on what should be the last play of the game. Alabama improves to 9-1. and one. New Mexico State falls to 1-9. And, and Nick Saban has the most wins of any active college football coach. 
It is as, as impressive a body of work as you could find in college athletics. I mean, not just college football. And another really good year and a dominating performance. I'm sure the Tide expecting to build that momentum into Arkansas next week. Alyssa's with Coach. Coach, career day for Bryce Young. What did you think about him in the offense today? He did a great job today. You know, he's very accurate with the ball. We got sacked once and had a sack fumble. That really wasn't his fault. But um, you know, I was pleased with the way our guys came out and competed in the game. This is always a tough game to get up for, so hopefully we can carry this momentum forward to the tough games we got coming up in the SEC. How important was it for you to get some of those second and third string guys in today? Oh, it's great. I mean, you know, these guys work hard. They're very unrewarded for what they do. So to get to play all these players was really special. As far as some of the adjustments, some of the emphasis you guys made this week after LSU, what did you think about the way that they responded to the coaching this week? No, I think we responded well. You know, I mean, we'll see next week because uh, we're going to play against a lot better competition. So, um, but I, I think the players had the right mindset. They tried to do things the right way, and that's really what you're looking for. Thank you, Coach. Congrats. Thank you. Let's check out today's celebration moment brought to you by Allstate. It is Nick Saban who now has the most wins of any active college football coach with his 265th passing Mac Brown for the most in college football. For Matt Stinchcomb and Alyssa Lang and our entire crew, I'm Taylor Zarzer. Back to Dari Noka in our SEC Network studios.